everybody's yep. set. Hi, I'm Justin Coyman, PCTA's Associate Director of Trail Operations, and I work on programs that affect the trail and the trail experience. My name is Jack Haskell, Trail Aim Found, Class of 2006, and I'm the Trail Information Manager for PCTA, and I work on projects that help hikers and trail users. And I'm Cotezzi, or Dirty Avocado. I through hiked the PCT in 2017, and I really love this trail. So the three of us are here to make a little video in the Sierra Buttes about the safe and responsible use of the PCT. So important, more people than ever. Hope you watch it. One of the main reasons why the PCT isn't just like any other long trail is because it is a national scenic trail. If we want the trail to stay as beautiful and spectacular as it is right now, we all have to do our part. We are all individually responsible for making sure that this trail remains just as beautiful as it is today. Whether you're out here for just a day, a week, or months, the experience is gonna be very special. So every year, thousands of volunteers dedicate tens of thousands of hours to maintaining and protecting the PCT. And they do it for the public. The trail is here for us to use now and for future generations. With more people on the trail comes the challenge of additional impacts, both to the trail itself, to the surrounding landscape, and to the trail experience for other people. Quite honestly, it's a good challenge for us to have at PCTA. More and more people are out enjoying the trail. That's wonderful. But facing that challenge is really up to all of us. PCTA can't solve the challenge ourselves. The Forest Service, the Park Service, we can't do it alone. It really is up to each person to take the extra time, make the extra effort to minimize their impacts while traveling along the trail. So what I do and what you do when you're out on the trail, it, it makes a big difference. Um, we have real impacts. And if, uh, if you go out and you build a new fire ring, you're essentially building a campsite. And that impact that you had, you were just there for a couple hours in the evening, it might feel like it's fleeting. But if somebody comes in behind you and uses that site, and again, all of a sudden you've had permanent impact that's really hard to reverse. Uh, all of our actions matter. There is real risk out there on the Pacific Crest Trail. What I recommend to you and everyone else interested in taking this long journey is to be aware of the risks, but specifically the really high risks in certain sections like the High Sierra um, with all the passes and creek crossings, the heat in the desert too. A lot of people travel with emergency devices or GPS devices. But at the end of the day, the best way to stay safe out there is to know how to manage risks and be completely self-reliant. The bottom line is that you are the only person that is responsible for your safety when you're out there. Be realistic and honest with yourself about your own capabilities and realize that you do have a choice when you are faced with any dangerous sections on the trail. There's no shame in skipping, flipping, or even quitting if that's what you truly feel must be done in order to make it out alive and in one piece. Wildfires can be a huge threat to the PCT and the lands surrounding the trail. It's important for folks to know that campfires are typically banned in almost all of Southern California. And if it's a dry year, that fire restriction will spread to the rest of California, Oregon, and Washington during the hiking season. We totally understand that most folks don't want to worry about which park or forest that they're traveling through, but knowing where you are is important to knowing the local restrictions and where fire bans are in effect. If fires are allowed on the PCT, please make sure to be absolutely responsible with campfires. First and foremost, please do not build new fire rings. There are thousands of fire rings along the PCT already. And if you do have a fire, please use only down, dead, and small diameter material. Most importantly, make sure your fire is 100% out before you leave. Too many people walk away from campfires only to have them flare back up, and some actually cause wildfires. Tremendous amounts of the West and across the PCT have burned in the past few years. Please don't contribute to it this year. 
It's pretty disgusting to be hiking along or to be in camp and you see poop, dirty toilet paper, whatever it is. Doing the right thing when it comes to, to pooping and peeing outside is not hard. Uh, so some tips, uh, there's the obvious. You need to go 200 feet, that's about 70 paces from campsites, the trail, and water sources. 70 paces is pretty far. This isn't even far enough. You need to go much further than this. Be responsible when going poop. Don't go in a dry stream bed because eventually there's going to be water in that stream bed. Come springtime, hikers like you might drink from that water source. Once you've gone far enough, preferably away from your campsite because a lot of people go in camp, you're gonna need to dig a hole. You need to dig a pretty deep hole, six to eight inches deep. If you've dug a shallow grave, say two to three inches, it's just gonna be exposed. It's really not enough. It's pretty hard to do with the heel of your shoe. You need a shovel. One of these shovels weighs nothing. I mean, it weighs about as much as a couple of quarters in your pack. Beyond that, carry out your toilet paper. There's a lot of toilet paper on the surface. It's very easy to pack it out. You just put it in a Ziploc bag, carry it to the next town. Toilet paper, like any paper, is trash. You wouldn't leave the magazine you read. You shouldn't leave the toilet paper you use. So on the PCT, you are bound to have some pretty long days. You're gonna be exhausted. Your feet are gonna kill you. And by the end of the day, when you come to a site that looks kind of like this, with the trail pretty conveniently located, a close by water source right behind you as well, and it also looks pretty flat where you're standing, you're gonna be very tempted to just drop all your stuff and you know, pitch your tent. But one of the main reasons why you don't wanna do that is because it is not very sustainable. So you don't want to camp near water because you're that much more likely to contaminate it and pollute it. And you don't really want to camp near the trail because then you are affecting someone else's experience and need for solitude. The best way to avoid any of this is to just plan ahead and give yourself some time at the end of the night. If possible, choose an existing site where the impact has already happened. Let's try to keep the PCT as wild as we possibly can. And choosing a sustainable existing campsite is one of the biggest decisions that you're gonna make in the day. One of the reasons we come out to the PCT and these natural environments and wild places is to be in a place that's unimpacted and really pretty pristine. There's an abundance of wildlife, an amazing diversity of plants, the water is clear. It's really important for all of us along the PCT to take the extra time and make the effort to take care of these fragile resources. Water is an especially fragile resource. The aquatic plants, animals, amphibians, fish, and all the other wildlife that depend on this precious resource can be very susceptible to chemicals and some even have threatened populations. Backcountry water sources such as springs, streams, or alpine lakes are definitely not the place to wash sunscreen off your body, to clean your clothing, or to wash your dishes. Instead, please take the time and put the energy out there to collect the water, travel at least 200 feet away from these water sources, and do your cleaning there. Remember, it's up to all of us to ensure that this precious resource stays clean for the wildlife, the plants, and other PCT users. So it's really important to protect wildlife from your food. That's a little bit of a twist on it, right? We often think about protecting food from our wildlife. There are bears on the PCT and other wildlife that's, that's legendarily good at getting hikers food. And unfortunately, that's because other hikers before you have let those animals get their food. So protecting your food is not just your food, actually. It's all scented items. It's your toiletries and your trash and anything else that's scented, including your food. Bear canisters are required on some portions of the PCT, and really they're the most effective way to protect your scented items. So even where they're not required, think about carrying a bear canister. There are some other options that can be effective, like 
uh, animal resistant bags and properly bear hanging, meaning a counterbalance hang. Those are really difficult to do though. So uh, you need to make sure that you're doing them well and know that some bears will be able to get down a counterbalance hang. That's why these bear canisters are the best tactic. So please do your part for protecting wildlife on the PCT. Remember, a fed bear is a dead bear. Thanks for listening everybody. Remember, leave no trace is important and we're not all gonna be able to do the right thing 100% of the time, but if you leave no trace 99% of the time, that, that makes a big difference. Do your best to enjoy and protect the trail and leave it better for those who follow after you. We want you to fall in love with the trail just as much as we love it. And it's up to you, really. It's You're responsible for making sure that this trail stays as beautiful as it is now for a thousand years to come. So remember that and have fun out there.